Okay, so let's get started. Um, how many of you are brand new meditators, have never meditated before, or you're just getting started? Okay, so it looks like we pretty much have some experienced meditators. Okay, I'm just going to say briefly what my, um, my own um, definition of meditation is working for what we are doing right now, and what meditation is not, which I'm sure you guys know, but I just want to say for the video that um, meditation is not clearing your mind, although it can be, right? But what it really is, is the, the practice of intentionally experiencing and perceiving reality. Can I repeat that? Meditation is the intentional practice of experiencing and exploring reality. Okay, so I think that's a pretty important distinction because a lot of people think uh, meditation is my sitting and breathing and making sure that I don't get distracted, right? Just to be really practical. We'll come from this, um, this definition because we'll find it really, really helpful. The like exploration and experience of reality. And as part of our experiencing reality, why don't we take a moment? I'm going to set a timer for one minute. And I want for you to consider why you came here. Why are you here for this hour? And just come up with a word or a sentence or see what emerges in your mind as a word or a sentence for why you are here. And then I'll just ask a couple of people to share. Okay? Starting now. One minute. Why are you here today? Okay, thank you. Um, let me call on a, a couple of people. If you would like to share your name, um, what you came up with as a word or a sentence for why you are here. And um, then I'll have another question after that, which is this. Um, your name, your intention, and then what emerges for you or what do you think of when you think of creativity or leadership. And the reason I come up with that as a question is um, it's sort of an expertise of mine that I look at this work through because we create and we lead with our minds. Those are two domains where our mind is really literally our instrument. So if that is something that you'd like to focus on or, or think about, um, I would love for you to think about what is creativity or leadership? as well as that question, what is meditation for you, okay? And um, if you don't raise your hand, I may call on you. Again, it's an option for you to decline. All right, who would like to share? Okay, how about over here? Sure, um, hold on one second. For purposes of the Zoom call, I'm ask you to use your microphone. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, my name is Joel. And um, I'm here to focus on the questions I can remember. Yeah, two like, questions. There, right? Why are you here? And what is creativity or what is leadership to you? Yeah, let's find out the first one. Um, I'm here for an introduction to the book, which I haven't read. And um, I'm, I'm always interested in uh, expanding my meditation toolkit. So from what I read in the book, it was new ground for me. Yeah. So I thought, oh, okay, I'll see that. 
Um, so the second one, creativity and leadership. Um, I I don't know. That's I think when you threw that, up, I don't know. I need some a little more time to process what comes to mind because I feel like those are like very basic building blocks. That those come to mind by your other terms. So, um, so I don't know. I need to think about that a little bit more. Okay. okay. Thank you for that. You. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, okay. I'm Tom. He uh, and pronouns, and um, I'm here. I come to the regular Wednesday session here a lot, and this seemed like it was really interesting. I like the title. I feel like my mind is quite unilluminated, <laughs> so I, like I could use some light in there. <laughs> um, and I've been. I'm not. An, I don't think I'm a new meditator, but I'm certainly not a seasoned meditator. I feel like I've meditated enough to reach states of confusion that are kind of like, hey, what's going on here? Um, I feel like for so any illumination and trying to just sit with that and, and see where it goes. For creativity, my, I'm a psychologist, but my background is in theater and acting. And um, when I felt creative, I felt like most directly in touch with reality, especially with improvisation and things like that, because just perceiving what's going on and, and moment by moment and allowing impulses to manifest. Um, and it's just joyful. I have really different opinions about leadership. Um, I can talk about them at length or not at all. <laughs> but I just sort of feel like, um, I feel like good leadership is like, starts with following. Um, and I think that leadership, we're kind of, we read a book once that talked about that humans are sort of more like dogs than cats, that we're sort of, that we're sort of hierarchical, we're sort of pack animals. And so the leadership role is looking for somebody to tell us what to do, whereas cats are like, <laughs> and that I mean, this writing that we was the thing that led us into the most trouble because we're very intelligent and we're hierarchical and we're looking for people to tell us what to do. So I have mixed feelings about uh, um, leadership. Yeah, so that's enough for now. Very interesting. And I just want to repeat a bit of what you said. So, um, Tom, you're here because you're interested in the book and have your mind be illuminated. Um, I'm very interested in your psychology background. I have that too, as well, and as well as the creative type of experience. And I like how you talked about creativity um, as it's just this playful, warm thing with things emerging from you. Um, in theater, that's awesome. In improv, right? Um, things emerge, and it's like, what do, you, what do you do with it, right? Or what can you do with it? What's possible? That's, that's me. That's not what you said. <laughs> and then leadership. How we're more like dogs who are very group herd oriented animals and um, we look for someone to lead us. We want that direction and focus. So sit with that. And you know, I just want to say it's just a legitimate, you know, when your um, response to that question was like, I don't know. There's a lot of different ways to actually look at that. So that's really a valid point. And so here's one way to focus on, on what the definitions and focus of those things may be. So let's be in the spirit of exploration. And this example is a very nice concrete one to have. But it's also good to go and be a little bit more less precise and just go, hmm, I wonder, I wonder what those things might be in my life. Maybe they come across to me um, as a different slant, you know, Maybe I'm someone who really likes to envision things and share that with the world, for example. Right? That can be also a form of leadership. OK, so um, I'm going to ask Vanessa to share. Would you be uh, interested? OK, great. Um, yeah, my name's Vanessa. And um, I think my intention here today was uh, cultivating beginner's mind. Um, shape or form, I've been uh, doing TMI for like a little while now, I'm coming back to it after like a few years of not doing it. Um, and yeah, uh, creativity, I, I kind of struggled with that question of like, I, creativity and leadership are not things I've thought about in the context, in like a meditative context. Um, but I would say that creativity to me feels like, um, like resting like beauty out of the void. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for that, Vanessa. Um, beginner's mind, I love that. Um, starting from a virtual blank slate, that's something that is a really cool exercise to, to sort of take on. Um, I love that you've been around this work for a while. And by the way, this is The Mind Illuminated. If you um, don't have this book, I highly recommend grabbing it. It is like a college textbook. If you feel like it takes you a full day to get through the first two pages, that's fine. It did for me too. <laughs> um, each book is like its own book. And so the reason I'm teaching this class is because I want to find with you those concepts that allow you to, to hang on to the most important precepts you can actually uh, follow without feeling like overwhelmed by this. You can go, okay, so the core to stages one and two, which we'll go over today, are these three things or four things, and then you'll be able to go back and look in the book, which is also available digitally, and to explore more and play more. Um, so that's what I hope for, for you as someone who's around this work, you know how dense this book is. <laughs> right. But um, I love what you said about creativity as uh, emerging out of out of um, the void. That's really cool. I almost feel like I could just sit and meditate on that alone. <laughs> Clearly you have experienced this. That's really neat. Yeah. So thank you for coming. And you were the first person here, so I, I just had to learn about you. <laughs> well, I have been around this work for a while, too. As I mentioned, it's been two years uh, that I've been in this training program. But honestly, I've, um, I only discovered the Mind Illuminated when I moved here to San Francisco from New York City, where I um, experienced all different kinds of meditation. I was in Shambhala, and then I had a cycling accident. My neuropsychologist actually prescribed me meditation three times a day, one minute a day, one minute each session. So I got prescribed one minute of meditation three times a day, and it was that uh, prescription that actually changed my life and changed my practice. It made my practice what I lived and breathed. So I'm just going to throw that to you all as a, if there's anything you take away from this session today, just know that even a one minute session is real meditation and it will do something for you. Three times a day, even better. Just wake up one time during lunch and then go to sleep. Not a big deal. So um, I just want to be able to have us now, we're swimming in these beautiful sort of descriptions of meditation and creativity and beauty. And now I'm going to bring us to a more sharp uh, understanding of how we can practice. Because the advantages of the mind illuminated is that Chula Dasa lays out very elegantly um, a very old text, translates it into English, and uses neuropsychological metaphor to explain the different stages of concentration shamatha meditation. And there's a larger context of meditation even beyond that in um, insight meditation. But we're in this book focused on shamatha. And so we're going to really learn how to get our minds focused and concentrated. Um, I think what I'm going to do today, I'm going to literally read you a brief synopsis of stage one, as he describes it in The Mind Illuminated. Now, this is not Chuladasa's words, but it's my summary. And I'm doing this for simplicity. So we're going to learn about this stage one, establishing a practice. And each of these stages, I give an experience type um, definition of the stage. And then the insight you have from the stage, right? So stage one, if you'll see what the experience of it is, and you'll see what the insight is that you gain. And I'll explain stage two. OK. So we establish a practice in stage one. This is actually probably one of the most important things to do. 
um, even when you're an advanced meditator. So the experience you have at this stage is you develop consistency in meditation. Focus on sitting every day and managing distractions. The insight of stage one, realizing that discipline and intention, intention are key. The meditator begins to understand how scattered the mind can be. Now, how many of us can relate to that? <laughs> how scattered the mind can be. We'll get to talking about that. All right, so we're going to talk about stage one. And one of the exercises of stage one that's really nice to hold on to is the six step preparation. Now, you don't have to think about a six step, it's actually pretty intuitive. We'll just flow through it, okay? And then stage two, we'll talk about today. So that was stage one, establishing a practice. In stage two, we overcome mind wandering. So here's the experience of stage two. You alternate between brief moments of attention and longer periods of mind wandering. So this is about, we're gonna alternate between brief moments of attention, like you're going to be mostly having longer periods of mind wandering. So you're gonna be on the crazy raging ocean of your mind, and every once in a while, beep, you'll be on your surfboard uh, paying attention. And that is stage one. So if that's what you're experiencing, Awesome, you're meditating, this is great. You're, you're doing what you need to be doing, that's actually stage two, uh, being on the ocean, all right? Um, the insight of stage two, recognizing like an aha moment when the mind wakes up to distraction. This brings awareness to how the mind operates unconsciously. Okay, I'm gonna stay there for a moment. Um, a lot of the time when we start having this meditation intention, we think, okay, so I am going to be here and I'm going to not get distracted. I'm just going to clear my mind. I'm just going to follow my breath. Oh, wait, wait, what was I doing? <laughs> oh, oh, right, right, right. Okay, right. okay, great. You, you're there. You remembered. You woke up to that you were supposed to be meditating. Perfect. That is your experience of awareness at stage one and stage two. That is awareness. Now we're going to have richer experiences of awareness, but just know that you're, oh, what's I supposed to be doing right now? Oh, wait, 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 this. That's awareness. Okay. So we've gone through two simple definitions of stage one and two, and you can go back to the book and read the very rich descriptions of all this here in this book. But what I'll do now is I'm going to take you through back in stage one and the six steps to prepare. First step is why. Like we hear this in the startup world, right? 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 Like start with why. Well, it's the same thing with meditation. Why are you here? Why do you want to meditate? Um, actually, can I hear from somebody about why? Can I ask you? In the back, you want to share your name and why you like to meditate? Um, my name is Margaret. It's all right. Yes. Okay. My name is Margarita. They them pronouns. And why do I meditate? Um, I've always been very scattered, and growing up, I felt very chaotic and not aware of what I was feeling, what I was thinking people pleaser and so I discovered that through meditation I could discover who I am and actually be present with what's going on awesome. with myself. That's a great why. So you're actually getting present and aware to a way of being that you have of being scattered and chaotic and it affects your life in different ways, right? That's a really deep motivation and a why for learning to meditate, right? So even just being present with your why, it's very powerful. So all the six steps actually flow from here. First, you start with why. And if you walk away from this with just remembering that in the one minute three times a day, that's amazing, okay? <laughs> so why? And um, what follows that is just a simple goal. What are you going to do when you meditate? You're going to meditate daily? 
you're going to take on my suggestion to meditate one minute a day or even three times a day for one minute. Or you maybe have another practice where you're doing 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, maybe you're doing two hours a day, but having a clear, simple goal is what follows why. That's the step, um, second step of the six prep. Okay, why motivation? Sorry, why and goals, your simple goal. Okay, so um, anyone have a simple goal that you want to work on for this series? Um, let me ask you, Jimmy, do you have a meditation goal? I don't have a particular meditation goal for this series um, because I don't know that I'll complete the series. I, I came here um, this afternoon purely out of curiosity to see what this was, and, and I'll, I'll see if, if, if I end up coming back. I, I may. So far, so good. Oh, great. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, there's no, I have no clear goal at this point in this particular series. My goal in meditation in general, though, is to, to, to learn how to deal with difficulty with, amount, with a certain amount of, of grits without freaking out. OK, great. So that's a clear goal to learn how to deal with trouble with grace that that becomes who you are or something that you can be whenever things emerge okay um great so that's clear right why goals and now i'm going to call this just loosening expectations of your meeting those goals right let's um you know a lot of people are ready to self-flagellate for not um meditating daily or whatever. Let's start first, not with the discipline, but let's be a little bit looser. Let's have some grace with ourselves. Um, is there anyone here who would like to um, say how they do that with their meditation practice or with life in general? Do you have, um, I would love to actually see if um, the, the beautiful woman on the video would like to share. Um, if you are, um, Oh, actually, you're not raising your hand. So um, let me ask if the woman who is on video, would, would you like to share? And if not, um, don't, don't raise your hand. Or if you do, do raise your hand. Oh, you're not. Um, there's no audio. OK. That's OK. Don't worry about it. Oh, great. Can, can you he, he, he hear me? Yes, you sound great. Go ahead and share. And uh, maybe share a little bit about Oh, go ahead, go ahead, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm Samantha, definitely did not expect to talk at all. Dro dropped in a, a little bit late. I'm really liking what I hear so far. And uh, my practice has been ir irregular. I used to meditate every mo morning and it helped me a lot. Um, and. Uh, lately, it's been difficult to feel like I'm getting out of it what I used to. I know it's not about quieting the, the mind per se at all, uh, but I'm hoping that coming back to a place where I can remember what I used to get out of it will help, will help me go back to that. Okay. Okay. So, like, you have a you know, just a hope, right, that you can find what you found valuable and enjoyed with meditation. And that's fair. I mean, that's just having expectations that can be met, that's not too strict, to see if you can find what you wanted to um, experience. And um, I love that. Thank you so much for sharing and, and bravely taking this on. <laughs> but you're, you're here at the right time. And thank you so much. Um, I would love to uh, check in with you, um, our new uh, guest. Um, I'm gonna, Susan. Okay, great. So Susan, yes. um, I'm going to ask you to use the mic because we're on, we're being recorded on Zoom, if that's okay. And feel free to share what you want to or don't want to. You can just share your name. 
Um, but what we've been talking about are ways to prepare for meditation, and we've just talked about three steps. Why, setting simple goals, and how you can be loose with your expectations, like loosen them a little bit when you are achieving, trying to achieve a meditation goal. And I'm just gonna share that with you. You don't have to share anything else right now, but I will call on you later. Okay, okay? thank you so much. But yeah. welcome, thank you so much for thank coming. <laughs> Oh, wow, this is a great group. I'm, I'm feeling the, the warmth and um, thank you all for, for showing up. Even if you show up uh, late, you are actually on time. I just want you to know that. We're, we're, we're good. And I'm going to go on to this next fourth step. And that's the discipline, the diligence. So as we lose our, our expectations of ourselves and give us our, ourselves a little some grace, it's also important to know that diligence, discipline, is what is going to get us to our goals. So who would like to share about some discipline or diligence that you find you know, as a way that helps you to loosely, but also push yourself um, to achieve something new and to grow your practice? Oh, go ahead, Vanessa. Um, I have two answers here. Um, one is I um, I have like an accountability structure in place for my meditation. So for a while I was doing, if I didn't meditate an hour a day, I would rip up a taller bill um, that day. And it was very painful. Um, the second thing is I think I've actually found the framing of enjoyment to be much more valuable at, at this point than, than diligence. The, I think diligence to me evokes the same self-flagellation. Um, just I think because of conditioning or something, mm. um, but leading from enjoyment is important. You know, and that, what you just said, Vanessa, that um, thinking about the enjoyment of meditation, that is legitimately about diligence. And I'll say that it's a discipline to find joy, to be open to it, to search for it. And that's actually what I would ask that we think about diligence to be. It's, you're actually giving a profound insight with that share. So thank you so much. Um, let's see, discipline and diligence is just finding the joy. And if we did that with everything in life, my goodness, <laughs> can you imagine? Um, yeah, all right. Number four is a juicy one, right? Diligence, finding joy in our practice. And just knowing that you just gotta stick with it. All right, so the last two. Oh, go ahead, Paul. For joy. Um, in my experience of um, self flagellation and all that stuff, it's interesting. Um, it's the joy, so it becomes a value that I've set in my life to do this because I value peace of mind, as you're saying, right? I value um, not getting tumbled uh, through the rapids of, of life and, and, and being an empath, feeling everything and everything, it's, it's quite a challenge. So it's become a value of peace. Paul, I'm sorry, can I ask you to put your oh, mic? Oh, sorry, it's become, it's become <laughs> a value of peace. I set a value for myself. Instead of like a, a have to do, it's a value. And when, I, mm -hmm. and my, when I'm with my value, I'm naturally joyful to do the joy, to do the value, to be, to, I, I'm making a choice and I'm actually doing it. So it doesn't become a drudgery now, or I have to. It becomes a something, hey, this is something for me. And then also it becomes something for other people too because they don't have to deal with my stuff. <laughs> I, can, I can walk in there, I don't have to be eddying out my, my peel for the day. It's almost the opposite. I'm, I'm helping to maybe bring peace by just sitting in a coffee shop and being without any particular agenda. You know? So the joy is having had sit through the vicissitudes of the mind going like a washing machine and finally being able to have that moment, a glimpse or two like you're talking about. And yeah, and then after a time, wow, that was a long glimpse. Wow. And then the, the feeling of... Um, it's indescribable. 
just absolutely indescribable. But you guys know what I'm talking about when you've, you've touched it, right? We've had a glimpse. And so anyway, that was my share, that just to bring that instead of a drudgery kind of thing, it's a value that you're doing for you. It's not a have to, it's just a gentle, this is for you, kid. And um, you know, right. so there you go. What a powerful reframing of diligence and discipline. Really powerful. Let this change you guys. Let it change the way you look at your practice. And let it change the way you see your life. I'm feeling it. Okay. So let's talk about the other thing that gets us all in a kerfuffle, <laughs> distractions. So that's the fifth step um, in preparation is dealing with distractions. And as Vanessa so wisely expressed, as Paul did as well, um, distractions are way easier to deal with when you have diligence based in finding joy. So let's just see those things is coming together. You are going to deal with your distractions. You will deal with your lack of focus in life as well as in meditation. And you will just find the joy. Number five, distractions. With diligence, clear goals, looser expectations, and a clear understanding for why. Okay. Steps one, two, three, four, five. The sixth one is really simple. Posture. So how do we sit in meditation? So I know this is not a beginner class, and you guys are not beginners, but some of you out there might be total beginners. And I just want to present this for you, um, and for all of us who can always hear another way of talking. Now, many ways of sitting, lying, standing in meditation. To keep it simple, I would say that sitting, whether it is cross-legged like I am here, or sitting on a chair with your feet on the floor, which you'll see if you were to look at all the other people in this room right now, they're basically doing. Um, but I'm gonna add one special thing. And by the way, lying down, totally fine. Standing, super great. Uh, walking meditation, a totally legitimate practice uh, of, its, of its own. I actually do mostly walking meditation. And I lie around a lot. <laughs> so that's my practice. I'll shamelessly let you guys know that's what it's going on. But when I do sit, this is something that's really cool to know, is that when you sit, you know that your spine, if you think of it like boulders, right, on top, you know if you were to put like rocks uh, up to maybe three or even four, maybe some of you are talented and do five or six. At some point, if you've got the boulders in just the right center, they will just sit on each other without anything to move it or hold it, right? If you just get them into the right place, they will just sit there on top of each other with no effort. And guess what? Every time we meet, you guys are going to find that really cool central spot where you make literally no effort to line your back and have those boulders line up in your spine. This will change everything, I promise. This changes the game. <laughs> you will be able to go from, oh, I'll do 30 minutes of meditation. Oh, that, oh, I don't think I could do this. You'll be able to do two hours, no problem. And for those of you who are beginners, one minute will turn quickly into 20, 30, one hour. All right, so again, if you take only three things from this, it's one minute three times a day why is important and that little boulder trick okay at some point we will meditate guys i promise <laughs> all righty um i've just spoken a lot does anyone want to share any insights or um come things that are emerging as we um look at these different things in stage one I'm going to move on. Um, in a way, we have already gone through stage one practice and sharing. So I'm going to go on to stage two. And I'll repeat stage two. The experience is alternating between brief moments of attention 
and longer periods of mind wandering. That's what happens in stage two. Your insight, recognizing that, oh, where, what's going on? <laughs> you recognizing that you're distracted is the opportunity for a positive, aha, I am aware. This is my awareness. It's not a, oh, I'm bad. No, no. You're finding the joy of seeing your silly distraction mind uh, going everywhere. That is the nature of our mind right now. And it's just something to look at and go, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> and no matter how long you've meditated, at some point, you're going to be right there in stage one, and it's all good. I'm in stage one at various times of the day, and that's, that is fine. This is um, not stages of progress necessarily. Just think of them as modes of where your mind is happening and just observe it. Because again, meditation is the intentional practice of perceiving and exploring reality. That's what you're doing. It's not focusing as hard as you can on your breath. That's not meditation. It is the perceiving of reality. And that includes seeing your mind go all over the place. <laughs> wow, look at that. Look at where my mind is going. That is so interesting. Now, if you can go to that place in your meditation, you are uh, such smooth sailing. Even to just laugh a little at yourself. Great. OK. Now, we're going to go into a guided meditation where we're going to experience this. Now, some of you are more experienced, I'm sure. Um, some of you are just coming back to meditation. But I find a metaphor to be really helpful. And I mentioned it earlier. Our mind is like a raging ocean <laughs> for a lot of us. So those are probably pretty common. We're not dealing with raging oceans, but that's, that's less of us. Most of us are like, oh, what am I doing? What am I doing in my life? Oh my gosh, my rent. Oh my gosh, blah, blah, blah. Oh wait, what was I thinking about? Okay, okay. We're going to observe that. <laughs> and then every once in a while, you're going to go, okay, oh, wait. Right. That's what I'm here for. So if that's your experience, you're in the right place. If that's not your experience, good for you. We're going to talk more about what you um, would like, where you could learn next. But I just want you to know, everyone experiences this no matter how advanced you are. And it's an insightful thing to actually look at your mind that way for now. Um, this is the basics. And I say raging ocean because I like to think of a surfboard, right? That breath or whatever is your meditation object it doesn't have to be the breath. It can be other things like your bodily sensations. It can even be a thought or mantra. Um, we're going to use breath for today, although you can select whatever you like. And just get back on the surfboard, your breath, your meditation object, when you realize, ah, uh -huh, I'm distracted. And when you fall off again, just get back on the board. That's your goal. That's your goal for this meditation. Okay, so it is 6.15. And we're going to do a nice solid 25-minute med meditation. Now, if any of you feels that that's a really long meditation, don't worry. You're good. You're going to be fine. And like Vanessa, she just took a cushion to sit on the floor. Feel welcome to do that. Also, feel free not to. Just feel free to stay and sit. Again, remember the boulders and your spine. And it's a really cool thing to keep coming back to. Your posture really makes a difference. If you want to grab a blanket, Whatever you need to feel comfortable, do it. So we have a very intentional 25 minutes. I will guide you through the first few minutes, and then we're just going to sit silently. Um, yes? My click, camera clicks bother anybody. That one. Okay, and if it does bother you, just notice it bothering you. Just notice what it does. And just notice, oh, the camera click that's happening. That is happening, it's just happening. It's just part of the ocean. Just get back on your surfboard. Okay, so I'm gonna set a timer. 
And if you feel like it's a really long time, just notice yourself feeling it's a really long time. I'm going to guide you through some ways to get through this. And here we go. Starting now. Be here now. Be here now. Be here now. And as you sit, notice your breath. the nature of your breath. Be with your breath. Notice your chest rising and falling. And if it's helpful for you, try counting. Count your breath in cycles of 10 sec, 10. And I'll count with you. One. Two. Three. Nine, ten, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, one. Three, four, 
Three. Keep counting on your own. In cycles of ten. Yeah, this helps. You stay in your circle. The hot of awareness. Let's get back in your circle.
Okay. Let's come back. Slowly come back. Slowly come back. Okay. So here we are. Hello. Would anyone like to share anything? Is that really 25 minutes? Yes, it was. <laughs> Susan, do you want to say I've more? Never, no, I've just never done, I've never sat for 25 minutes. Wow. So, um, was it something that was, that went by quickly? Or it went was by it? quickly. Okay. Shocking. Wow. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Great. And what is your practice? And what has your practice been like? It's just the group environment. Maybe that's what I need. Okay. Well, I'm just a beginner. I'm a novice. Okay, so you're a beginner. Yeah, I've done. Yeah. Okay, yeah, right. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I've done lots of. I've just had to have a done sitting meditation. Mm -hmm. Like I've done, spent so many years in the yoga studio, and you know, I've done lots of walking and movement, but yeah, sitting it's not hasn't been my strength. So. Okay. Thank well, that's great. So Thanks for coming. You're brand new to Sorry, this sitting meditation. Also, it's, yeah, it's, it's a whole ordeal. All right, thank you. I'm so glad you're here. Okay, um, does anyone else want to say anything? Oh, that's here from Tom. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'll go really quick. I was going to, like, because, you know, my first set of thoughts was like, oh, we got 25 minutes. When's it, you know, they, they have this familiar pattern of thinking, which is, when is it going to be over? Is it still happening? You know, <laughs> Are we there yet? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, and then I've got these, um, you know, I've got these very familiar set of impulses that kind of pass by. And one of them has to do with the fact that I talked to my wife that I'd pick up papooses from the place across the street. And so I was thinking like, oh, yeah, papooses. Yeah, papooses. <laughs> so I keep going back to this kind of, you know, I'm hungry. I don't remember to do that. So that's and then coming back to breath. The extent I can. And then a lot of, I think a very familiar pattern for me also is that I'm, I'm like, I'm annoyed by lots of things. You know, I feel like I'm moving into this kind of like, I'm a grouchy old person sort of state of life. <laughs> and so it's like there was this beeping that happened every now and then. And it was always like, there's that beeping again. At one point you were moving around and it's kind of like, so I have this thing about, oh, somebody's moving around. How annoying. So I just have this kind of, like this way in which I kind of, define myself, I think, about, you know, my boundaries or about, like, sort of the things that I'm annoyed about. I was also trying to, like, take to heart what you all said about looking for joyfulness and sort of, like, like I'm joyful about what? That I'm grieving? That I'm, you know, there's this way in which I was kind of dipping into moments of joyfulness. And I guess my question for you, and it's maybe, it's not an easy question or a big question, it's kind of like you talked about meditation is real, perceiving reality, I don't know using the right word, but all of those things were kind of real. I mean, I was breathing, I was also having back pain, I was thinking about the bruises, beep, 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 you know, there's, so it's kind of like when you talk about perceiving reality, oh, there's horn honking, when you talk about perceiving reality, are you talking about something like all of that, even though most of it was sort of imaginary, like the, like I, there's a distinction in my mind between that I'm, you know, feeling the breath coming in or feeling my back pain and that I'm thinking about papooses. It feels like those are like different things, but when you talk about perceiving reality is what meditation is all about, like how do you think about the whole Well, thing? Tom, I have a very clear response for that. Right. <laughs> so Tom is describing his experience of reality in meditation. And a lot of different things. I was experiencing pain in my knee the whole time. Uh -huh. And then I was like, I probably should have said something about Paul coming to take pictures, which was so awesome. I was like so excited about it. And I'm like, oh, maybe I should have said something. Yeah. Um, and live and learn. Um, and that's in the background. And then I'm just like in bliss. And, you know, then there's little thoughts, right? The pupusas. I mean, that's like, you know something that emerges and then you're being a grouchy old man. I mean, 
Let's just cut it really simply right now. There are two ways of experiencing reality. One is with your attention. With your attention. So your mind, imagine your mind being like a mouse pointer and it points at different things. So you were paying attention to, you know, this click noise that was happening or the beep that was happening. Your attention went there. Okay. One way of experiencing reality. And then in the background was this papusa that you need to remember to grab. You know, in the background for me was this like pain that I was trying not to pay attention to. That background context type of perceiving, that is awareness. Okay, that's the second way of experiencing reality. Attention with the mouse pointing of your mind and then awareness what's happening around here. Um, you know, in, in nursery school, teachers will explain, you know, the owl will look for the prey, but then in the background, its wings are flying and it might find other prey that it might um, catch next, right? So that's your awareness, right? And so you actually describe very beautifully in a way that set of concepts. So those are two different types of perceptions. And maybe I'll go a little further. This is a little more advanced stuff, but you guys can handle this. Um, there's that sort of background awareness of you feeling like a grouchy old man. I'm getting that grouchy old woman stuff too. <laughs> I'm just turned 50, I'm like, Rah. I get to be a grouchy old man. <laughs> and that's like this um, sense of self, the sense of self emerging. That's an interesting thing to look at. Right, a type of awareness that gives context to the way you receive and interpret things. Right, so that's coming out of your awareness. Um, it can change the way you pay attention to things. So you can see how that's this is a helpful basic concept: attention versus awareness. Now, this is key to understanding everything about how brilliant this book, The Mind Illuminated, is. Because this distinction between attention and awareness is something that Chula Dasa was the first person to really define in a book of this type. Um, for millennia, what the Buddhist texts and great meditation texts have talked about is awareness. And awareness has so many different things in it, right? There's awareness with a capital A, the awareness, right? The awareness that within everything happens. And then there's the awareness of what's happening around us. And then there's aware of this, you know, sense of self that I have about myself. And, you know, but if we were to just look at awareness as context and then attention, the way you focus, all these things about Buddhist literature that can be extremely confused, all of a sudden it becomes clear. Now, I don't know how many of you have actually gone and read original texts. <laughs> Most of us are reading translations. Okay, Paul's up, so you know. Um, I studied with Robert Thurman at Columbia University. If you don't know who Robert Thurman is, he basically was the guy who explained why Buddhism was a critical um, juncture for Western civilization. And that's why he teaches at Columbia University to talk about why our wonderful Western civilization is rooted on Buddhism and how it made a complete difference in the way we look at everything. But all these crazy canons and all these things, um, if you don't really know the difference between attention and awareness, you're not really clear how to practice. And I read a lot of texts and I just remember having this very vague notion of how I'm supposed to be sort of focusing my breath and then paying you know, making sure I'm staying there. But if you listen to this idea, the surfboard, attention, the raging ocean, kind of where your awareness can be. Sometimes your attention is in the ocean, but it's also the context. You can start to get that when you're on the board, you can kind of loosely be on the board. And for some reason, it kind of helps you instead of being rigidly hanging on tight and letting the waves toss you. So this is just one simple but powerful way to understand and then find ease with a 25 minute sit, which Susan accidentally discovered is actually totally doable. 
In fact, Margaret, I'd love to know what your experience was like. If you don't mind sharing, of course, you can always decline. Um, it's dinner time for me, so I was really hungry. So I was really distracted with that sensation. I feel like I was judging it, like, oh, I should have eaten before. Um, but I feel like, yeah, the tension was on the stomach, and then I would get distracted with thoughts. And then I'd find myself being aware of like the music outside, folks, you know, taking pictures. And then I thought that that was a really pleasant experience for me, like focusing the lens and then hearing them take the picture. I was like, oh, I really like how that makes me feel. So uh, overall, and the time went by pretty fast too for me. Great. Yeah. That's so great to hear. It sounded like that you were able to take in some of the distractions and find joy and pleasure from it. That's really, that's really the, what I'm, exactly what I'm talking about. And then some thoughts are not great, like feeling hungry and you start to feel a little blamey. But then you can also see that it's just you experiencing awareness again, right? And that's like kind of an other kind of set of feelings of like, you know, I should be taking care of myself better before I go to meditation. It's I should. There's some self emerging and a way of being. So this is what we're doing in meditation. We are noticing the things that emerge in our senses, and then we notice the way we talk to ourselves. There's this mental activity happening, these thoughts that emerge. And then there's even more subtle versions of it. Like, you know, you, I was having this pain in my knee, and then I was having a thought about the pain in my knee. Like, I'm having a pain in my knee, and that is the pain in my knee. <laughs> it's like an echo. If you start to look at the more granular ways that your mind works, there's things that open up. It's really interesting. This is the exploration period of peace I'm talking about. And everyone is capable of doing this. And I'm just wanting to give you all guide rails for things you may actually already do already. Things you may even have done as a little kid that you didn't realize was a profound thing to do. And so getting these all lined up as tools and insights, tools that bring insight, that's what we're going to be doing here in this five-part series. And I'm going to take you on a journey that has you seeing this book, this thick text of absolute brilliance, as a simple set of practices and experiences of insights through the world of attention and awareness. And through that, you will find so much that you can't even imagine. Excited about that? All right, so I'm going to invite you all to consider setting your calendar up for fourth Mondays. Every fourth Monday, the next five months, we will be right here. And, five weeks. oh, sorry, five months, actually. Oh, five months, yeah. The next five months, it's once every month on fourth Mondays. And I just want to let you guys know that another amazing teacher from um, our community, he's actually my mentor, Tucker Peck, he teaches a monthly, uh, a weekly sangha every Monday, um, 7.30, right? And so when we're not here, you can always come to Tucker's class at 7.30, and you will also have an ex amazing experience of meditation. And he's very, very knowledgeable about the mind illuminated as he essentially helped Chua Dasa put and research this book and is one of his first students. So I highly recommend that you either stay for this next Sangha, which will happen at 730, or you come to another week. And when we're not here, you can totally um, get all the amazing insights that you're having now with him. Um, and you may actually see me at his sangha, because <laughs> that's actually how I got to know the Dharma Collective before I started teaching here through Tucker. So um, let's see, it's now six. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm get, went 10 minutes over. So I will close. And um, if you guys have any questions or thoughts about anything else, feel free to um, just reach out and give, I'll, I'll, I can give you my, um, uh, my email. and. If you have questions for questions about that, and that would be Minda, M as in Mary, I N D A, at co caring.org. That's my nonprofit. Um, what we do is humanitarian assistance and leadership training for people who want to make global impact. 
And so that's my work. That's why I like to focus on creativity and leadership. And that's really my personal goal being here is having people open to awakening and then to really in your journey have that awakening be your dharma and to build whatever your role is in this world so that you can joyfully serve. Okay, so thanks for staying two minutes later and um, much love. <laughs> have a great night. Thank you.